Welcome to the Shift Conference. Come on, let's make some noise for Jesus. Last night it went down. started the evening off with a breakthrough. I need a breakthrough. I'm going to lose my mind. I need a breakthrough. I am not going to be able to get up tomorrow morning. If you need a breakthrough, this atmosphere. And then the apostle of the house made a declaration over the entire city. I decree and declare over Birmingham, Alabama, you're going to get your breakthrough tonight. But that's not all. Because Bishop Joseph Walker III came to deliver a powerful message of inspiration. People look at you and wonder why you give God glory, why your head is up, why you praising God. But you ought to tell them, because my father put me in an uncomfortable situation. And I learned it. It wasn't tummy time. It was prayer time. And I learned how to pray. I learned how to fast. I learned how to cast out demons. And now I got my head. This morning, Rakita C. Jackson came to deliver a message on mental health. Because if you take care of your mental, your physical, your emotional, and your spiritual, it's all connected. Then Apostle Rondi and Lady Good taught us all about marriage. So Jesus gave us a beautiful example right here of how to choose our battles. Because he was being led by Holy Spirit on which time to say something and which time not to. Then Apostle Stephen A. Davis came back and lit it up again. Let me get over in there and see if there's any light that can come from it. Let me get in your light. Let me get in your mind. Let me get in your heart with what I'm preaching and teaching today. I guarantee you there's something more in you that you have not manifested. And tonight you don't want to miss a powerful word from Bishop Tudor Bismarck. You are definitely in the right place. The SIFT Conference.
anyone excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Oh, someone came ready to worship the Lord. Somebody that came ready to love on Jesus, to give him worship and give him praise. Come on, say with me, Father, I came ready to worship you in spirit and in truth. If you believe that, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We magnify you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, when you look at the word of God and all throughout the scriptures, New Testament and Old Testament, when the people of God worshiped, you saw extraordinary supernatural things happen. Paul and Silas, jail cells opened, Jericho, the walls came down. I believe that we can send up a praise tonight that are going to shift atmospheres and shift your family. And that's why we come, because we believe that something prophetic happens when we come to the shift conference, amen? So let's just declare the goodness of God tonight. Father, we bless your name and we glorify you. Hallelujah. For your good and your mercy endures forever. Have your way home.
church because it's not looking like refresh right now am i am i at refresh family church shall continually be in my mouth. I shall make my boast in the Lord, for he is good. Your grace and your mercy overflows towards your children. So that means that I'm so grateful that if I have to take off my shoes or if my eyelashes come off or if my ponytail falls off, it's all right because I came ready to worship. I came ready to praise. I came ready to give God. Let's go. Let's go. He's a good, good 
this atmosphere we declare deliverance in this atmosphere we declare breakthrough in this atmosphere we declare a shifting in this atmosphere God let your kingdom come and let your will be done
to the Lord one more time. You are, you are, you are. Think about all the things that he has done for you. Here's my worship, here's my Oh, make that commitment, that commitment of worship. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Receive, receive my worship.
send up that worship. You don't need music. You don't need music. You know who God is to you. You know God for yourself. You don't need music to release your worship. Come on, come on, come on. I will always. Here's my worship, all of my word, receive my worship, all of my worship, all of my worship. Receive my worship. I believe in that, even now that the Holy Spirit is releasing gifts. He's releasing anointings. He's releasing purpose. He's releasing healing. He's releasing the fire of the Holy Spirit. Oh, and ye shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. If you need a refueling, if you need a refilling, if you need a refilling, pull it down from heaven. Don't wait on your neighbor. 
God of Jacob, we present ourselves unto you this evening. We are a living sacrifice. And Father, you have placed us into a place of holiness. And God, we are acceptable to you this evening. We bless your holy name gracing us with your presence like you have this evening. We do not take it for granted, oh God. Father, thank you for causing us to survive in the times of great suffering. But you are God and we give you all that you deserve. You said many of the afflictions of the righteous, but you would deliver them out of them all. And Father, I will worship this evening is an announcement that we thank you for delivering us from every affliction that we have experienced all through 2022. So we yield to you in this conference called SHIFT. We even pivot now. We surrender our program, our agenda to you. We dare not step over your presence and manifest our flesh. We yield ourselves to your spirit and you've been good to us, God, and we, we will acknowledge you in all our ways and you will direct our paths. We, we're seeking your direction now. We yield to your direction now. And we're open and we're ready to, to follow the instructions of the Lord because we believe that you are God and we are your people. In the name of Jesus, your dear son, we pray. If you believe that prayer and agree with that prayer, shout amen in the atmosphere. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we ought to be prepared for the unexpected, but we're not always prepared for the unexpected. And God has filled this house with his glory. And we thank him for his glory, and we're, we're going to push our program a little bit further back because I believe it's God's time to speak to us. I believe the best times to speak is when God has graced and touched the hearts and minds of people. 
where they are now able to receive, but not only will they receive, they can apply what they've heard. And I believe that you're in that moment of receiving, but you will have great application of what you will hear tonight. And I believe the voice of the Lord is in this place. I believe that God has something to say to us because we have the name shift. I believe he shifted everything that we had on the agenda. So what we do, we yield to hear the voice of the Lord this evening, and then we'll move further after the voice of the Lord has been heard. It brings me great honor to bring up a man that birthed me into my apostolic calling. Uh, the late Bishop Eddie L. Long birthed me into the bishopric, but I needed another hand because there was something left in me that had to come to the surface or we wouldn't be doing what we're doing. I thank God that he had a great relationship with a man that came to my side, encouraged me, prayed for me, and then birthed me into my apostolic calling. I am an apostle in my own right. Without Bishop Tudor Bismarck, I cannot say that publicly, but because he's here and because he yielded to the giftings and the anointing of God, I can stand here today and say I am better for the church now because of the grace of God that's upon his life. He needs no introduction. All around the world, he's known as a general of the faith. He uses the title of, an, of a bishop, but we know he is a chief apostle in his own right. Wherever he goes, he shakes the continents, transforms the economy and the lives of people. He's called upon by the prestige and he's known to be a man that when he speaks, God honors every word that he speaks. I don't have to ask you to stretch your hands towards him because God's hands are already stretched towards him. I want you to give him a warm applause and a shout of hallelujah. Receive now, Bishop Tudor Bismarck. Give him a wave offering in unison, in unity. All over the world. Come on, guys, watching around the world. Something special happening right here in Birmingham. And it's transmitting to where you are. TJ, I know you've got a lot of folks watching online. Just post there for everybody just to wave their hands in unison. Like this, do your hands like this as you're moving. 
There's rainbows in the building. Angels moving in the building. I can feel the wings of angels. Oh! It's a refreshing, it's a shift, it's a shift, it's a shift, it's a shift, something shifting, 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 something shifting, 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 shifting. Psalmist, can we give God praise for a woman who is so sensitive to the Holy Spirit? God bless you, baby. God bless you, amen. And to the man of God, Bishop Davis, the apostle of this house, and his very beautiful wife, Lady D. You're looking awesome, girl. That's my girl. Can we show some appreciation for Jurassic Park? Oh my God, these guys are animals. You're an animal. Say after me, say I'm an animal. I'm an animal. Oh, for real. There's an animal. 
Come on, hug somebody, tell them you love them, tell them you love them, tell them you love them. Just hug someone. Go back to your seats, baby. Behave yourself. Amen. Something's happening here. It's on tonight. It's on tonight. It's on tonight. Something's coming to you, baby girl. Amen. Greetings in the name of the Lord to all of you that are here this evening. To Apostle Bishop Davis, to uh, Lady D, the leadership of this phenomenal organization. Congratulations on your conference, and we know that there are a number of essential uh, liturgical program that will take place after this word. I'll be very sensitive with the time. Um, we're going to try to put this into God being my help at 37 minutes, and I can do that. And uh, if the Lord begins to move in a special way, well, it's the Lord. I need him. Isn't that right? Amen. Amen. And so, but I'm not preempting that to go over. No time was allocated to me. But I'm smart enough to know that there's a lot coming behind me. And so I've allocated myself 37 minutes. Is that good, Bishop? Is that too much? Okay, I'll take 48. All right. No, I'll stay, I'll stay, to, I'll stay to 38 minutes. Amen. I'm in Psalm 23 and verse 5. We'll be jumping into John chapter number 14. I will need verse 3. And then we'll go to our exegetical scripture, which is Genesis 28, starting from verse 10. I'll be using the King James Version, and I'll be drawing verses that are of particular note for this presentation. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Here's my verse. You prepare a table before me. Where? And after the table has been prepared, what do you do? And then what happens after that? So Jesus had the last supper. That's the table in the presence of his enemies. He then went to the garden of olives where the olives were squashed, anointing his head with oil. He then walked up to Calvary and his blood was shed. His cup was running over. It's all yours tonight. Amen. Shout, my head is anointed. My cup is running over. Amen. I'm in verse 3 of chapter 14 of John. For in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am there you may be also you may be seated as we go to Genesis chapter number 28 and Jacob in verse 10 went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran that's where his father grandfather left his dad and all kinds of things happened there. And he lighted upon a certain place and he stayed there all night. The reason, because
because the sun was set. So Jacob is about to enter into a night season. But in that night season, he took the stones of that place. Everyone say the stones of that place. Sisters and brothers, it was 12 stones. One for each stone of the breastplate, but more so one for each stone, which was a pillar on the 12 tribes of Israel. So he had to act instinctively, prophetically. And he made a bed of 12. And he laid there. And when the foundation of the 12 was in place, he dreamed a dream and heaven opened over his head. It's not likely that God would move where there's no foundational work. It might be a one-off, but don't depend on it. And then he goes on to say, and it reached to the top of heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending. And the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father. The God of Isaac. He didn't say he was his father. The land which you lie on to you, I will give it and to your seed. I haven't given it to you yet, but I will give it. Shout, that's the promise. And... Verse 14, your seed will be like dust of the, of the earth, spread to the west, the east, the north, the south, and in you, and in your seed shall the families of the earth Behold, I am with you. I will keep you in all places. Wherever you go, and I will bring you again into this land, this place. I will not leave you until I have done <laughs> what I have spoken. We can go home after that reading. My message now for about 35 minutes is preparing a place. There is a place, sisters and brothers, for your thoughts. You must think deliberate thoughts. Don't allow outside influences to program the way you think. And so you must be an independent thinker, being aware that coercive power with those around you in collaborative actions can produce a corporate thought. But even though there is a corporality of thought, you must be an individual thinker. You must bring your thoughts to the table. Turn to your name and say, think, think deep. And so, there's a place for thoughts. Here's a table I wrote some time ago. Within every human being, there is a physical brain. Within every brain, there is a mind, M-I-N-D, a mind, or a mind set. Within every mind, there is an attitude or a belief system. With every belief system or attitude, there is a molder. Something, someone is molding your attitude, the way you think. And with every molder or shaper, there is an agenda. So whatever voice is speaking to you now has an agenda, whether it's Chico's, Nordstrom's, Walmart, Dollar Store, Golden Corral, Louis Vuitton, 
and it goes on and on and on. Every that's why we have too many denominations and churches. Because instead of the corporate mind being superior, the individual mind has overruled the corporate mind. We have to celebrate our differences, but we have to work together. And so remember that there's always an agenda. I'm not much of a, a techno guy, but my daughter-in-law, Tariro, and, and Vreen, my son, who's traveling with me, was telling me that, uh, and you know this already, but this is just for me, that, that based on the websites you visit a lot or the things you do, uh, that is fed back to some place that starts sending you stuff that you might want to buy. Now, I've been trying to find a Harley Davidson leather cap for the last nine months, and I can't find one. But nobody's sending me information where I can find a leather cap, a Harley Davidson cap. So that theory is working for somebody. It's not working for leather caps. <laughs> and so the point is that, that we're being marched in a certain way. It's fearful because it appears like it's a bit of a matrix. Go here, do this, stand here, this traffic light, eat here, this school, not that school, Brazilian hair, make it blonde, make it white, make it gray. Uh, and th the list goes on and on and on and on. And so uh, we then, as refresh, we choose to be here. It's, it's what, it's, 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 it's what, what's tonight? It's Tuesday, right? It's Monday, it's Monday. Oh, we lost the day, Monday. Who goes to church on Monday? People that have chosen to come together. The fact that you have chosen to come together, I'm taking too much time with this, the fact that you have chosen to come together, you have to leave your individual mind at the door and let the corporate mind, directed by the leading mind, direct the traffic. The object is to distribute the bread. I don't know if I don't care if John is hugging people, giving bread. He has a thousand men to feed. If you have Nathaniel or Matthew is calculating as he's giving bread, he still has a thousand people to feed because his five loaves uh, for five thousand men. And so, as long as distribution is assured, methodology doesn't matter. Yeah. As long as distribution is assured, don't be trying to, if you're a big football player, you want to be hugging people while you're giving them bread. It doesn't fit, Tyrus. It just doesn't fit. And so, uh, everybody say there's an agenda. When we're dealing with the heavenlies and the heavenly agenda for this service, for this first family, for this ministry, its subsidiaries, our father may go around the world. There, there are dynamics of order, dynamics of order. It's a complete study on protocol. And so uh, I'll start with the lowest common denominator here. Gift produces service. Say that. I have a, a little basic knowledge of the piano. You know, I played a little piano when I was being raised. And uh, I played a bit of guitar, you know, and so on. But uh, 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 you have rendered your gift, and so ably you have rendered your gift. Gift Produces service. Say that. So I'm not gifted, so I shouldn't serve. I played percussion for years. I, my first instrument was percussion and drums. And so I lost all of that. I, I should enjoy because gift produces service. So cut hair. Do nails if that's what you're doing. Massage the world away if that's your forte. Work your business, make money, compete with Amazon. 
replace Facebook. Amen. And so, 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 gift produces service. You'll never know your gift until you bring it to service. So you serve. In the words of Bob Dylan, you gotta serve somebody. So, so, your gift is not worth anything if it's not worth the service. Service produces credibility. I'm taking too long. Service produces credibility. Now, you can say that Jack isn't that gifted, but he is reliable. Service produces credibility. He is reliable. May not be gifted, but he's reliable. Credibility produces influence. If you want to know anything about soul food in Birmingham, talk to Jack. Because Jack is credible, but credibility produces influence. Influence produces atmosphere. What's your name, baby girl? Sister Jurassic Park? <laughs> Joanne, you have four lungs. There's somebody also here, you know, uh, the song, Here Is My Worship, was written by Phil Thompson. April is here, the, the, the sister. April can slam that song as well. But I tell you what, your gift was so phenomenal tonight. It's exactly what was needed. But, but your gift helped facilitate God because God doesn't need me. He doesn't need you. God doesn't need anybody. He is sovereign. We need him. I am the vine. You are the... And so you need him. And the minute you think that God needs you in any place, he just move you aside and bring a strange guy who is singing Psalm 23, you prepare a place for me. Amen. I'm not leading yet, but I know you prepare a place for me. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not king yet, but I know you prepare a place for me. For every single person, there is a place. I'm taking too much time. Dream, please, time me. Amen. That's the problem with being 65. Influence produces atmosphere. Atmosphere produces change. Atmosphere produces change. This atmosphere changed everybody. Change produces seed. Whenever you have change, seed is given because of new thoughts and new ideas. Seed produces fruit. And fruit produces dominion. Gift produces service, service produces credibility, credibility produces influence, influence produces atmosphere, atmosphere produces change, change produces seed, seed produces fruit, and fruit produces dominion. And so when I wrote this, I was saying, Lord, what exactly are you saying? He was saying with reference to this message that every person, every person has a place. Everything that has ever been made has a place. There is a place for it. There is a place for me. There is a place for you. Tell somebody, find your place. And so in my third table, every person needs a place. Say that. You need a place. Stop living with your mama. Get your own place. You're 42 years old. Yes, your own place. Go to the hostel, man. Go to a super eight. <laughs> Every person needs a place. Say that. Every person needs to belong. Every person needs to belong. Let's make people feel. Let's make them feel. Wanted, loved, needed. I was at Jean and I were at a restaurant and they were saying, we just love y'all. We, we love y'all. There's always a lot of love going around your barrier. We just love y'all. And the food was so good. 
And when we left, I just said, oh, just love you. So, he was like, will you be back? Absolutely. They had sweet iced tea. Amen. Oh, they have no idea what that is in Detroit. Every person needs to belong. Number three, every place needs a person. Every place needs a person. That organ's a place. It needs a person. The pulpit's a place. It needs a person. That car's a place. It needs a person. That land's a place. It needs a building. Hotel, church, school, university. Amen. Every place needs a person. Somebody said to me uh, yesterday at a dedication service, I said, thank you for standing with the man of God and help build this thing. He said to me, he said, uh, it's the Lord that built this thing. I said, yeah, but before you came, did you see what it looked like? <laughs> it's true. God needs a person, but the place needs a person. There is a place that's waiting for you. There's a place that's looking for you. And so your meandering through life is because God is trying to GPS you to the right place at the right time to meet dark and lovely. Give somebody a high five. Say it's on tonight. It's on tonight. Amen. Everything has a place where it fits. So I can usually tell when I go to somebody's house, if, if, if I'm comfortable enough and they allow me to, and I'll get the cutlery. If the knives and the forks and the spoons and the dessert spoons and soup spoons and fish knives, if those are in place, this is a together person. Because everything has a place. And if you do not identify a place for a thing, your life is in disorder. And God cannot bless disorder. And so there should be a place for shoes. For running shoes, in my case. For your suits. So color code them. Your shirts, your trousers, uh, your hair, your glasses. Stop it, Judah. Stop it. I'm tired, you We got you at one o'clock in the morning. Only when you better help us too, amen. Find the place for the thing. Because sometimes people will just find that there's a Black Friday sale and a brother will go and buy a big donkey TV the size of this thing, can't get it in the house. And, and puts this whole TV up in there, shuts down the neighborhood because he's sucking all the juice because there's no place for the thing. <laughs> Bishop Davis is wondering, I wonder why I got him up early. Everything has a place. Even in a city with good city planning, where we're building Kingdom Cathedral, they told me 30 years. There's a plan for the city, a 30-year plan that includes flyover uh, freeways and all of that. And so you can't just put a building here just because the Lord spoke to you. The Lord knows that there is a 30-year plan for the city and so on and so forth. And so, so, so everything has a place. So when they're planning cities, there's school zones and church zones and a place for a cemetery, future cemeteries. And the story goes on because everything has a place and every place needs to be designated. Somebody must say amen. amen. And so in the service, we created a place for God to come in and celebrate amongst his people, the blood washed, the redeemed of the Lord, those that have an unsolicited thank you in their heart we entering into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And because it's so innocent and so sincere, he loves it. He comes and swims in the middle of that and sends angels and says, I want some of this up there. And so we created a place for God. And once you create a place for God, 
before the clock strikes midnight, God is already creating a place somewhere for you. There's a university student, you're not too happy being here. Amen. The place you really want to go in your worship tonight, God moves some things. You're moving from Birmingham to the place you want to go. Amen. Not everybody can clap because that's not everybody going out of state. Amen. The earth, God, Genesis 1, everything has been designated in its place. The water wants to take over. That's the spirit. The spirit always wants to run everything. And there's nothing really wrong with that except that at some point, at some point you're going to have to jump in a bathtub. So there have to be land issues which are physical issues and spirit issues. It doesn't make sense that you're swimming in the Holy Ghost here and then when you get visitors, they're swimming in dishes and laundry. That's not been done. So there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. Every gift is balanced by a fruit. Nine fruit of the Spirit. So as powerful you as you are with a gift, you have to balance it with powerful fruit that people can see that you are Evander Holyfield, the real deal. And so we create as a church, we create places for people. Some churches are blessed to have a school or a preschool or a, a university or a missions program. It's all creating place so that people that we ordain, we consecrate, we designate, whatever, that they have a place to go. They have a place to go. So this church's responsibility as the chief apostolic house, you have to create a place so that where I am, you may be there too. If you have 300 ordained ministers in this church, how is that going to help anybody? But if you have 300 ordained ministers in this church with 600 places they can go, oh yes, God is creating a place for you. Shambok had great revival on Interstate 20 in a place called Tyler, Texas. It was a truck stop when the great Shambok was preaching around the world and performing miracles. Tyler, Texas was his place. Give your neighbor a high five. Say, you have a place, baby. You have a place. You've got to bring me to C-sharp now. I want to end quickly. Turn to your neighbor and say, preparation is everything. Mm, he said, I go. To prepare. So preparation comes before the place. Don't marry that girl if you have not prepared a place. Don't have children if you haven't prepared a and that means junior school and mid school and high school and any university that they give demands. Turn to your neighbor, say, prepare a place. It is mandatory that every man and woman prepare a long term goal for your life. You just turned 50. Prepare a place for when you turn 60. I'm 65 years old now, but I prepared a place for when I turn 70, and I'm taking Chi Chi with me. Turn to a man, say, prepare a place. If you're leading a church, you better make sure you prepare a place for God, but prepare a place for your people, but prepare a place for gifted people and weak people and 
problem people and sinful people and demon possessed people and politicians oh yes prepare a place for strong money and no money for first class life but living below the poverty line prepare a place for welfare people abused people hurting people shall prepare a place when you go to your neighborhood see who you can feed who you can clothe who you can educate because you never know who you're really touching and why you discover something in the future turn to your neighbor and say i'm gonna prepare a place for you starting on my knees i'm gonna pray for you the rest of this week that god would shift that god would refresh that god would lift that god would give courage oh yes if you don't know the person say what's your name i gotta pray for you this week can i preach this thing like a feeling coming up in here god has prepared a place for you i said god has prepared a place for you turn to your neighbor and say i'm on my way where you going i'm going to my place i'm on my way to my place god has made me an apostle i'm going to my apostolic place god has made me a prophet i'm going to prophesy with the company of prophets god has made me an evangelist tents are coming i feel like preaching to pastors and teachers deacons and elders rich people and poor people shall i have a place put your foot down tell the devil to his face i have a place you can't remove me tell the devil and his mother-in-law say i have a place i'm not moving from this place i'm fighting for this land i'm fighting for my rights i'm fighting for what's mine shall i have a place and if i don't have a place my daddy is preparing a place for me come on bishop god bless you with wisdom god bless you with strength god bless you with courage god bless you with understanding god bless you with finance with land with houses say yes give god a praise give god a praise because something's about to break out in this place and so jacob is running from his brother and the bible says blessings were given to jacob that isaac thought was esau there were 12 blessings given to jacob when jacob uh, when isaac thought it was esau he got 12 blessings a blessing for each son that he was carrying he didn't know he had 12 sons because he'd never met rachel and kissed her until he cried oh yes amen there are times in your life where god will cause you to move to another place you're running but you don't know where you're running you're running to your place i feel like forrest gump run forest run you find your place i said run run with your head up run proud proud to be dark and lovely proud to be an alabamian alabamian a birminghamian proud to be who you is where you are give your neighbor a high five say you have a place baby lift up your head don't cry lift up your countenance don't be broken don't let words break you don't let people's 
these opinions destroy you, lift up your head. You have a place in the eons and annexes of God. You have a place to be great. You have a place to be counted. You have a place of influence. Jacob, where you going? I don't know, but I'm going somewhere. And as the sun began to go down, the Bible says he came to a certain place. And when he got there, his prophetic instinct kicked in. He said, I need to make a bed. I need to rest in the Lord. I need to sleep in the power of God. And he found 12 stones. He didn't know it was Reuben and Simeon and Levi and Judah and Issachar and Naphtali. And he didn't know he's now preaching to stuff that's in him. The stuff that's in him is preaching to him. You gotta go get a place for what's inside of you. It's easy to take 12 stones, but can you do what I've called you to do? Shout, I have a place. Say it again, I have a place. Ah, yes, I have a place. Can I just put my foot down and put my foot on the gas and tell the devil like Jacob, I have a place. I'm going somewhere. A ladder's coming from the sky. God's on top of the ladder. God's gonna talk to me. And he's gonna give me an assurance. I will be with you in every place. In every place. So if you go and do your PhD and you're still bishop here, God will be with you in that place. If you're bishop here, PhD here, start a business here, God will be with you in every place. I go to prepare a place for you. Try something new. He promised he'll be with you in every place. So Jacob, so Jacob, keep running for your destiny. Sisters and brothers, God kept Jacob because of what was in him. God will keep you because of what is in you. God kept Jacob because of the blessing of Abraham. God kept Jacob because of the well that Isaac dug, that Jacob dug, that Jesus sat on when he spoke to a woman from Samaria. God kept Jacob for 12 tribes to manifest. God kept Jacob because Joseph needed to save the world. Shall God keep me? Shall God keep me? He promised to keep you in every way. He promised to keep you in everything. He promised to bless the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart. He promised, he promised to guide your steps, bless the work of your hands. He promised to make you fruitful. He promised to elevate you and lift you up. God kept Jacob because of Moses. He kept Jacob because of Joshua and Caleb. He kept, he kept Jacob because Jericho had to come down. He kept Jacob because of Elijah and Elisha and Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel and Daniel. He kept Jacob because of John who said one that's greater than I is coming. And when he saw him, he said, there it is, the Lamb of God. Come on, clap your hands. God kept Jacob because in Jacob was a king of kings, a lord of lords. In Jacob 
was the mighty healer in Jacob was the deliverer in Jacob was the prince of peace God will keep you because of what is in you it's in you prepare a place Boaz it's in you I said yes give him praise as God opens doors for everybody here to speak property and finance and all of this church walks in the blessing of Obedidim. Father, we release that all over the members, the believers, the participants. We thank you. Iga Malenko, si amen. choice but to set people in place so if you would give us about 20 to 30 minutes can you give us that 20 to 30 minutes and we want to set some people in place we're going to move one after the other consistently because apostle bishop Tudor Bismarck has given us our orders tonight face to the ordinal. The Holy Scriptures and early Christian writers make it clear that from the apostles' time there have been different ministries within the church. In particular, since the time of the New Testament, three distinct orders of ordained ministers have been characteristics of Christ's holy universal church. First, there is the order of apostles who are called to represent Christ's authority in leading and uniting the church. Second, associated with them as are the ascension gifts or ordained elders in subsequent times, generally known as presbyters. Together with the apostles, they take part in the governance of the church and the carrying out of the kingdoms and pastoral work in the preaching of the word of God and administering of his holy sacraments. Third, there are deacons who assist apostles and elders in all of this work. It is also a special responsibility of deacons to minister in Christ's name to the poor, the sick, the suffering, and helpless. The persons who are chosen are recognized by the church as being called by God to these sacred orders are affirmed by apostles with the laying on of hands. It is also recognized and affirmed that this ministry is not exclusive to this portion of Christ's universal church, but it is a gift from God for the nurturing of his people and the proclamation of his gospel everywhere.
accordingly, the manner of ordaining in this church is to be such as has been and is most generally recognized by the body of Christ as suitable for conferring the sacred orders of apostles, presbyters, and deacons. The presiding apostle, Summers the Canaanites, Eric D. Gilliam, Raquel Kramer, Jennifer Good, Caleb Good, Jesse Turner, Margaret J. Crosby, Tabitha Brown, James Williams, and Tony Hendricks to the altar of affirmation. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. We are gathered here as an apostolic house to celebrate God and to affirm the candidates upon whom he has bestowed a session grace gifts. The apostolic office is the most reverence ministry order among the ascension gifts. It is mentioned over 70 times in the New Testament. The number of time words are mentioned in the Holy Writ indicates priority, significance, and rank given to them by God. According to 1 Corinthians 12, 28, apostolic ministry is set first in the church by God and should be embraced as an indispensable and foundational to all things pertaining to the church. The word apostle is a transliteration of the Greek word apostolos, meaning one sent forth. Those who are sent forth to represent the authority of Christ Jesus are given several functions and duties. These responsibilities include overseeing, planting, watering, encouraging, correcting, judging, activating, imparting, demonstrating, establishing, pioneering, mobilizing, teaching, preaching, and ordaining. Leaders who are apostles cannot limit themselves to managerial duties, but must fully express the grace that is upon the apostolic office. Authority and power are dominant features associated with this ministry. Miracles, signs, wonders, casting out of devils, commanding atmospheres, and organizing people are some of its organic expressions. The apostle Paul said in Acts 20, 29 through 30, for I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock, also of your own selves, and shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. In this passage of scripture, Paul warned the church what would happen after his departure. He infers that, the cert that certain evil activity can be restrained by the power of the apostolic grace. Recommendation of the Presbytery. The Apostolic Global Impact Board supports the affirmation of Eric D. Gilliard as apostle and Raquel Creamer, Jennifer Good, Caleb Good, Jesse Turner, Margaret J. Crosby, and Tabitha Brown as gifts in God's holy church. Therefore, we ask you to lay hands and pour the oil of anointing upon him and her in the power of the Holy Spirit, affirming him as an apostle in the church of our Lord Jesus Christ. All the candidates, please stand. If you would grab and prepare for the reading. Bless be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We exalt God as head over all. For the responsive reading, the charge, Apostolic Global Impact officially separates you to the work of raising and reconciling the people of your community 
in the United States of America to the purpose of God. I charge you to maintain a consecrated life with an eye single to the grace of God, to maintain the vision, mission, and the core values of the ministry set out by apostolic global impact, to uphold, obey, and defend the word of God. To the inquiry of the candidates. The candidates being affirmed, James Williams, Mr. Hendricks, Eric D. Gilliard, Raquel Creamer, Jennifer Good, Caleb Good, Jessa, Jesse Turner, Marvin J. Crosby, and Tabitha Brown. In the presence of this assembly, will you commit yourselves to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God through the call of his church? Candidates? Will you govern, supply counsel, preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures? Will you be diligent in your study of the Holy Scriptures and in your use of the means of grace? Will you give faithful witness in the world that God loves may be known in all that you do? The laying on of hands was prayer. Is witness in scriptures a sign of empowering and sending forth? It is a symbol of the gifting of the Holy Spirit. Anointed with oil to be conducted by Apostle Stephen A. Davis. As well as the laying on of hands by Apostle Stephen A. Davis. Assisted by the board of apostles. James Williams, Tony Hendricks, Eric D. Gilliard, Raquel Creamer, Jennifer Good, Caleb Good, Jesse Turner, Margaret J. Crosby, and Tabitha Brown. The Office of Apostle, Evangelist, Community Bishop, Teacher, and Intercessor is affirmed and committed to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. the candidates to come to the platform please if we can use these seats that are on the platform Bishop Gill, you, you will be in the first seat, and then we'll all sit accordingly. For the apostles, will you join us on the platform, please? The other candidates, if you will remain standing once we're We've utilized the seats. Dennis, if you would remove this table, please. This moment is a reverent moment that we choose to set in place the gifts of God that he has ordained for the church and the community. By the laying on of hands and the anointing of all, all, we empower them to do the work of the ministry.
apostles, he would come around and just give us a little bit of room because you need to be visible as well. And all the family members and friends who are here to support these candidates, do all that you can to make sure that they're strong. Pray for them constantly because this is a grand day, but there is an enemy. And we're going to make sure the enemy does not get the advantage of these candidates. I prefer that you all take your seats. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the God of the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Father, as I lay my hands on this man of God, I decree and declare he was formed from his mother's womb for this office that he now represents and holds. Father, as I anoint him with oil, with the assistance and the support of other apostles, and God, we have heard from heaven tonight through our chief apostle, Apostle Bishop Tudor Bismarck. We thank you for the anointing that yet flows in the earth through Apostle Bishop Eddie Along. Father, now, as I lay my hands on this son of yours, I decree and I declare over his life right now that you would take a hold of his heart, that you would empower his mouth. Father, that you would flow from fingertip to fingertip, from head to toe now. Lord, that you would anoint him in a way that he cannot be anointed without proper order. And Father, he comes under this apostolic order now. And Father, we release the anointing upon him now. He'll be changed from this day forward. As Elijah prayed and laid his hands on Elijah, I decree and I declare under the apostolic authority of God, we release the empowered right now, and we release the authority of God right now for him to function not just in title, but in function. God, we decree and declare with power from on high now that you saturate this son of yours and you do what only you can do and you manifest in only ways that you can manifest now. Linger in his life. Bathe him in your glory. Visit him. In the name yes. of our Savior yes. and our King, yes. Jesus yes. the Christ. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, you have opened up the heaven over these candidates today. And Father, what we release in the atmosphere is only because you have empowered us from heaven above. Father, you're pouring out the anointing. You're pouring out your oil. You're pouring out your glory, God. God, as we come together as apostolic global impact, affirming in the earth what you have already affirmed in heaven, decreeing and declaring, God, everything that you have ordained from the mother's womb, even though a mother may not be here to see it. Father, it was decreed and declared, and I decree and declare over this man of God's life an unusual anointing, an unusual wisdom, and a passion, God, that exceeds that of mortal man. We decree and declare the anointing is now resting on this vessel of yours, and it cannot be removed. This son of Bishop Eddie L. Longs, this son that was birthed from the loins of a patriarch, this man that was birthed from the loins, this son that carries the DNA of the anointing that rested on our late dear father. I decree and I declare over him, fulfilling the will of God and the purpose of God and the plan of God. Yet in this earth, Father, give him wings today, give him power today, show forth glory upon him, God. Sad
saturate him, saturate him, saturate him, oh God. Pour out fresh oil. Everything that he suffered through, bring out the best in him. Father, he will win souls from the north, south, east, and west. Double portions anointing upon him this day. Open heavens, open heaven, open heaven, open heaven, open heaven, open heaven. Raise up your prophetic voice now in the name of Jesus at pastoral anointing. God, double portions anointing. God, the flow all the way from Zimbabwe. God, we decree and declare the apostolic anointing. God, rest on your daughter. God, rain down, rain down. Spirit of the living God, let the heavens be open. Let the angels ascend and descend. Set her in her place. Set her in her place. Oh, hi, hey, 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 to the youth, through the youth, pastor, stimulate his heart. Apostolic anointings now on his life, dreams and visions. Every enemy of the anointing on your life is a defeated foe, man of God. Everything that tried to infiltrate your thought patterns derail you from the vision of your Father. I decree and declare now by the power of the Holy Ghost that God invades your life. Invades your life. Invades your life. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Every yes in her spirit is an amen now. It is so. Let the anointing flow on her life like never before, oh God. Waves and waves of glory. Waves and waves of glory. Waves and waves of glory. More and more. More and more. More and more. Establish your church. Establish your church. More and more. Anointing, 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 call Lord, call Lord, anointing, anointing, call a press, call a press, anointing. you suffer through, everything you fought through, everything you swam through, everything you endured, God, double it, anoint a God, anoint a mind, anoint a heart, a heart anoint a Shondoho, 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 Yandaha, Yandaha, she's like the one that will wait at the tomb. Father, she's been waiting. Now, God, now, God, anoint her, anoint her. It was all worth it. It was all worth it. It was all worth it. 
It is the anointing. It is the anointing. It was all worth it. It was all worth it. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. Ways and ways of the anointing. Ways and ways of the anointing. Hey, Lord, we don't want to be the same, God. We want to be saved. Pour out your anointing. anointing. We receive this anointing. We embrace the mantle right now. All the mantles that have fallen over the last 20 years of the solid global impact and the brotherhood. We embrace the anointing. We embrace the anointing of Catherine Kuhlman. We embrace the anointing of William Seymour. We embrace the anointing of John G. Lake. We embrace the anointing of all Robert. We embrace the anointing. Let the anointing of evangelism by Dr. Billy Graham rest in this place. The mantles are falling now. Grab a hold of those mantles. But the Lord said, I shall deliver them out of them all. on me, all of you all, your witnesses, whether you're present or streaming, the anointing is coming to your life right now. Hallelujah. Whatever the has been doing to try to destroy you, he didn't want to wound you, he wanted to destroy you, but the anointing is upon you.
bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Come on. Come on, bless him, bless him, bless him. It is settled. It is settled. Yes. 
stay in your worship as we give out these plaques because things have been put in place. They've been put in place. We can have every Apostle Eric Gildor stand up, please. Apostolic succession. Be the grace of Almighty God. And with an eye, sing unto the Lord. Apostle Stephen Allen Davis, apostle in our Lord's church, do publicly proclaim and defend our right as one of the legitimate successors to Christ and the apostles on any occasion of this consecration and ordination of a brother in Christ and in an epiphany, we come now to consecrate and grant apostolic succession to Eric D. Gilliard of Apostolic Global Impact, Monday, September 19, 2022 AD. On this 13th date of November in the year of our Lord, 2015, Apostle Ellie Long of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church extended this grace to Stephen A. Davis for the bishopric. On the 19th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2019, the apostle and Bishop Tudor Bismarck of Jubilee New Life Ministries extended this grace of affirmation upon Stephen A. Davis for the apostleship. In keeping of the apostle apostolic creed, and the continued resurrection of the biblical characteristics of the apostles. Know that the existence of this foundational gift will not be removed from the earth until the coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord, Chief Apostle. In our efforts to defend and protect the doctrine that empowers the believer, we are purposefully recruiting and dispatching this modern-day apostle to restore and to advance the church of Jesus Christ. Be it known to all generations that this apostleship stands as a mark that will change the direction of the world. Our God in heaven shall be magnified. Jesus Christ shall be glorified through the ongoing mission of restoration of that which was lost. Give God praise for this brother. Give God praise. Apostolic concession, be the grace of Almighty God, and with the eye of single of God, Stephen A. Davis, Allen Davis, Apostle in our Lord's Church, do publicly proclaim and defend our right as one of the legitimate successors to Christ and the Apostles on any occasion of the consecration and ordination of a brother or sister in Christ, and in this epistle. We come now to consecrate and grant apostolic succession of the community bishop, James Williams, of Apostolic Global Impact, Monday, September 19th, 2022 AD, on the 13th day of November in the year of our Lord, 2015, Apostle Bishop Eddie Long of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church extended this grace to Stephen A. Davis, Brother Bishop, on the 19th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2019, the Apostle and Bishop Tudor Bismarck of Jubilee New Life Ministries extended this grace of affirmation upon Stephen A. Davis for the apostleship. In keeping of the apostolic creed and the continued resurrection of the biblical characteristics of the apostles and bishops, Know that this existence of this foundational gift will not be removed from the earth until the coming of Jesus Christ, our chief apostle. In our effort to defend and protect the doctrine that empowers the believer, we are purposely recruiting and dispatching this modern-day community bishop to restore and to advance the community. 
be it known to all generations that the community of bishops stand as a mark that will change the direction of our world. Our God in heaven shall be magnified. Jesus Christ shall be glorified through the ongoing mission of restoration of that which was lost. God bless you, brother. To Tony Hendricks of the Apostolic Global Impact, Monday, September 19, 2022, of A.D., on the 13th day of November, in the year of our Lord, 2015, Apostle Eddie L. Long of New Birth Missionary Baptist Church extended this grace to Stephen A. Davis for the, for the bishopry on the 19th day of April, in the year of our Lord, 2019, the Apostle and Bishop Tudor Bismarck of Jubilee New Life Ministries extended this grace of affirmation upon Stephen A. Davis for the apostleship. In keeping with the apostolic creed and the continued resurrection of the biblical characteristics of the apostles and bishops, know that this existence of this foundational gift will not be removed from the earth until the keeping, until the Lord Jesus Christ, our chief apostle, in our efforts to defend and protect the doctrine that empowers the believer, we purposely recruiting and dispatching this modern day community bishop to restore mm, and to advance the community. Be it known to all generations that the community bishop stands as a mark that will change the direction of the world. Our God in heaven shall be magnified. Jesus Christ shall be glorified through the ongoing mission of restoration of that which was lost. Apostolic Global Impact Certification Ordination be it known to all men that we under the protection and direction of the Almighty God with an eye single to his glory and by the laying on of hands have elevated Jennifer Good to the office of pastor at Kingdom Church International. <laughs> Apostolic Global Impact Certification of Ordination be it known to all men that we under the protection and direction of the Almighty God with a single eye of his glory and by the land on of hands have elevated Caleb Good to the office of youth pastor at Kingdom Church International. Hallelujah. 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 Apostolic Global Impact certification of ordination be it known to all men that we under the protection and direction of the almighty God with an eye single to his glory and by the land on of hands have elevated Raquel Creamer to the office of evangelists at Kingdom Church International hallelujah hallelujah Apostolic Global Impact Certification of Ordination, be it known that all men that we, under the protection and direction of Almighty God, when the eye single to his glory, and by the laying on the hands, have elected Tabitha Brown to the office of intercessor at Kingdom Church International. <laughs> Apostolic Global Impact. Cert certif certif certification of ordination be it known to all men that we under the protection and direction of the almighty God with an eye single to his glory and by the laying on of hands have elevated Jesse Turner to the office of teacher at Kingdom Church International.
apostolic global impact certified of ordination be it known unto all men that we on the protection and direction of almighty God with an eye single to his glory and by the laying on our hands have elected Margaret Margaret J. Crosby to the office of teacher at City of Change Church. Come on church, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. is going to remain. The rest of the candidates, you all can go back down at this moment. And then Apostle will remain. Now that he is duly affirmed as an apostle in the Lord's church. Y'all give them a hand. At this moment, we're going to worship the Lord in our giving. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we get excited around here about giving. For we know while the earth remains, seed time and harvest shall not cease. Hallelujah. And I thank God for our leader. He sensed that the Lord shifted the service and we went with God. And you know, it takes a confident and mature leader and a confident and mature people to be able to go that direction knowing that we know, amen, still how to do kingdom business. Is that good? So we have a few ways to give. They're on the screen right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for this most sacred night. A whole lot went into this night, amen. And so I'm going to ask you to give a good seat on tonight. We're going to stand at this time, amen. As we prepare those love gifts, prepare those seeds, amen, for those that still may be tied in tonight, that's fine as well. Again, you can go by the screen for those who are using technology. If you're giving cash or check, we're going to allow you to bring that down. But let's make this confession after me. Into the kingdom of God, we sow our finances. Every seed shall produce for this house and my house. I give. It is given to me. Good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over. Do men give to me? Therefore, I expect checks in the mail, increase on the job, job opportunities, business opportunities, sales and commissions, new customers, great grace, great favor. I have all sufficiency in all things with no limits and no boundaries. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God praise as you bring that seed at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for those that are streaming in, you can give as well. We thank God for you. Amen. The anointing is both tangible and transferable. Amen. And the same experience that's taking place in this worship experience, in this sanctuary, is in your household right now, wherever you are. God bless you. As you're leaving... All the candidates and bishops, apostles, we want you to go to the green room. We'll be taking pictures. Also, we have vendors out. We want to make sure you go and see the vendors before you leave tonight. Go and be a blessing to the vendors. Make sure you do that. Amen. God bless you. Peace be upon you. Tomorrow o'clock, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock a.m. Be here. Be ready for the word of God. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I need all our apostolic, before you, if you would just quit moving just a second. I need all our apostolic global impact 
uh, to meet me on the stage. All of the apostles who, pastors who want to meet me, if you would meet me here on the stage. Lady Davis. <laughs> Apostle. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a picture. That's fine. <laughs> I, I just, um, we want to thank God for you and your great leadership. Your wife was standing with you, your family. For all that you've rendered to us. And today, we want to say thank you by sowing into your life. And any others who want to join us, but Apostolic Global Impact is going to sow into your life. On your appreciation, you gave, you and your wife gave everything to we to be a blessing to somebody else. That says a lot for who you are, for who y'all are. We love you. You've been the greatest blessing. I was telling someone when I was on the way here, I've been a part of a lot of things. I've never been a part of someone that pulls the love that you pour out. And I'm not talking about just saying it, but I'm talking about demonstrating it. God blessed us when he gave us Bishop Eddie L. Long. Then he turned around and gave us a double blessing. When he gave us you. Yes, you were our brother. But how I grew up, grew up, is that when the parents would leave and whoever they would leave in charge, they were to treat them just like the parent. Daddy is gone. But he deposited into you. And you have deposited into us. And for that, we say thank you. We say thank you. When I wasn't here, I wanted to be here. I was watching. But my brothers were calling, checking to see how my mom was, checking to see how I was, checking on me on the highway. That's what you produce. It's running through apostolic global impact because of you. And we just want to say thank you. So tonight, we want to sow into your life. And anyone else who wants to sow into their life, we want to sow into you and your family life. We love you. 